If you're creating Excel or Power BI dashboards and reports, there are a few certain things that you have to absolutely keep in mind. These are absolutely tiny things that are going to actually make or break your reports. What are these things? Let's find out. The very first thing that I'd like to speak about is proofreading. And more importantly, when do you do the proofreading? When you're creating a report, your brain is in the analyst mode. That means that you have done your tax calculations, you've written your M queries, your SQL, you've built your visualizations, and your brain is intensified with that volume of the work that you have done. If you start to do proofreading with that analytical brain set that you have at the moment, you would not be able to find the mistakes that your boss or the CEO will immediately see taking a look at your dashboard from a 30,000 feet view of a level. You have to give yourself a break. Probably enough that your brain resets and comes out of that analytical thinking where you're trying to debug your formulas, write some code, and you have to look at the numbers from the perspective of the business. Give yourself enough break. Now that break could be an hour, two hours, the next day, but you have to rest your brain in order to proofread your dashboard really well. I have personally made that mistakes numerous number of times just committing the mistakes that my CEO would immediately find out in my dashboard. Some numbers were not matching and obviously that was a big blunder because I was very too focused on getting that formula right or getting that chart visual right or getting that shade right and that's not the point. Give yourself enough break and then you start to do the proofreading and you can thank me later because you now know that you have to give yourself a bit of a break. Learning Power BI, especially the hard parts which is tax, data modeling and trickier data cleansing problems can be very, very hard to learn. What you need is support from the community and people. And you also need to understand a lot of real life applications so that you know that where these concepts are going to be used in a practical life scenario. And that is the reason why we built the Goodly Insider Community. The community is going to be the house for all my current and the future course updates. And inside of the community, all my courses are extremely well structured. That means that I lay a lot of stress on foundational level understanding and teaching you how things work rather than actually mugging up functions after the other. Once you understand how anything works, the good thing is you can take that understanding and apply it to your real life problems and solve them very, very confidently. Another very interesting thing that we have done within our courses in the community is that we have done interlinkages. Let's just say that you're trying to learn a particular concept and within that concept, I have used a few formulas or functions that I'm not explicitly teaching you. I've linked all of those functions below the course in the form of videos that you can watch it. These are like supplementary lessons which are going to enhance your learning because we believe that Interlinkages of the concepts is what drives learning and not really straight jacketing to just one particular video that is going to give you all the learning. And by the way, we are running a superb Black Friday sale. In case you have been wanting to take my courses and be the part of the Goodly Insider community, this would be the best time to take initiative and start to enroll in the course. All the links in description are down below and I look forward to seeing you inside. Yes. From here on, we discuss what exactly do you proofread? Like what are the things that you check inside your dashboard so that it becomes impeccable? And one of the surest ways to lose trust is to make typos, grammar mistakes and spelling errors. These are absolute blunders and they show the lack of attention to detail and commitment towards just good language. So when you are reading through all of the work that you have done in your dashboard, I think Power BI has a poor capability of spell checks. What you can do is you can take a snapshot of that, put in any kind of LLM or any kind of software that takes a look at your text and quickly identifies what mistakes have you done. Please train your eyes to take a look at the spellings once you're reading the entire text or labels inside of your dashboard. And you're going to find that once in a while you do actually make spelling errors and that could be corrected. The next super important thing, maybe even a notch above spellings is the accuracy of the numbers. Now what happens is that when you're creating a dashboard, you are too busy writing formulas, trying to get your calculations right, trying to get your visuals right, trying to make them work in a certain way that you actually forget the accuracy of the numbers. And by accuracy of the numbers, I actually mean that are the numbers looking reasonable that the CEO would agree with those numbers or not? Or are they looking off way off than what your actual business is? Now, this obviously helps you to understand your own business and understand the numbers and then check those benchmarks with your actual numbers in the dashboard. But you have to take a look at the accuracy of the numbers. A lot of times what is going to happen is that your numbers are going to be spot on pretty accurate. But because 
because of some nuance in the data, some things that you might have filtered in or filtered out, your numbers are going to be slightly off. And there is a reason for that. There is an explanation for that. I'd highly recommend that you highlight such exceptions in your dashboards. And your dashboards should immediately be able to point out that this is not the regular number. We have turned on or turned off a few data sets that this number is looking a bit different. And if you do that, the trust of the user taking a look at your dashboard and the ability of you to explain the results goes way through the roof and your work is respected and is a lot more trustworthy. So please double check the accuracy of the numbers. The next super, super important thing is the labels and the titles on top of your charts, visuals, tables, whatever that might be. Now, if you do write generic titles like sales by region or sales by whatever, then it becomes very, very hard for the user to understand what's going on. The responsibility of interpreting the chart, extracting valuable information out of the chart now relies on the user and you have just slapped a generic title on top of that. Please make it an effort to write great titles that show the hidden insight of the chart right on top of that. I've done an extensive video on how do you work with titles and how do you make great titles in case you do not know the techniques behind it and what goes on in Power BI to be able to write great titles and what do they even mean by writing a great title. I suggest that you watch that video, but please write enough labels that explain the dashboard and write great titles because at the end of the day, there might be a possibility that when somebody is taking a look at your dashboard, you are not around to explain stuff and your work standalone should be good enough to explain itself. And that will only come if you have done immense effort to write explainer labels and great titles that explain your analysis and your insights. The next big thing in terms of visual coherence is proximity. And I cannot tell you how important is that. Now, let's just say that, for example, you build a dashboard and in the dashboard, you have a bunch of slicers up on the top and you have a couple of things moving around in the dashboard. Now, let's just say of all of those slicer, one slicer only is related to one particular chart and does not kind of talk to the other charts. Now, that position of that particular slicer needs to be very proximate to the chart. Otherwise, it's going to look like broken. Things that are connected or related to one another, these could be legends, chart titles, labels, slicers, cards that are closely related and they work in a coherence. They should be actually proximate to one another so that the user realizes that these things are like a whole thing. They work together. So you have to pay special attention to proximity. What things should I keep together to one another so that it becomes easier for the user to interact and talk and understand the dashboard? Super important stuff. Now comes the visual component. When you're trying to present your data in the form of a dashboard or a report, the one thing that matters the most is alignment and the white space. If your things are misaligned, even by a small nudge, the eyes are somehow going to go through that misaligned thing on the screen and it starts to look a bit awkward. And if you have that a bit often to happening on your dashboard, your entire dashboard is going to look a bit off and a bit misaligned. It's not going to give a very structured feeling to the end user. So go to the extents of perfectly aligning the titles, perfectly positioning the charts, and the alignment alone is a factor that is going to bring out nice and structured layout of your dashboard. The other big thing is white space. Do not be in this pressure to fill up the entire space on the screen. If you have little things to say and not much to say, please leave the rest of the space empty and your eyes would not go over there because you have so little but very meaningful stuff on the dashboard. Your attention of the user is automatically going to go on the stuff that occupies the ink and is automatically going to leave out the space which is not occupying the ink. White space actually helps bring clarity. Take a look at the best of the websites like for example Notion. Super clean, super white space. Take a look at Google and a lot of other sites have used white spaces as a strategy to drive attention to places that truly deserve attention. Use it to your benefit rather than actually trying to fill up the space by meaningless stuff. Last but not the least is the logical flow and the coherence of information. Whatever you information you have presented in the dashboard is one information automatically leading to the next information or not. Have you set up the dashboard in such a way that it automatically leads from one screen or one chart to the other, to the other, to the other. Now, this is especially a very, very hard thing to do. And you'd only be able to do that once you understand the needs of the business better. So it just comes with practice. The more you understand the questions that are going to be asked in a certain order, you can then design your dashboard in a way that it helps answer those questions in that particular order. Typically, you would put the most important KPI metrics up on the top, then 
layer them with some charts and then layer them with more detailed tables and then probably some drill downs on the next pages as well. This highly depends upon how the end user wants to consume the information. But this is a thing that you have to keep in mind and you're only going to be good with this thing once you understand the user requirement. So whenever your CEO or CFO is asking you questions successively one after the other and you see a pattern in it, that's a very big piece of information that you have unlocked. Questions should be then presented in that particular order in your charts and you will see that the work and the iterations and the trust in your dashboard goes up significantly.